Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Sushant Sudesh and I'm your instructor for this Azure Fundamentals examination course. So we just completed the first learning path and we are entering the second learning path called Exploring Microsoft Azure Core Services. In that, the first module is all about exploring core Azure architectural components. We will start with Azure regions. Microsoft Azure is made up of data centers located around the globe. These data centers are organized and made available to end users by region. A region is a geographical area on the planet containing at least one, but potentially multiple data centers. Azure intelligently assigns and controls the resources within each region to ensure the workloads are appropriately balanced. A few examples of regions are West US, Canada Central, West Europe, Australia East, Japan West. At the time of when I'm delivering this training, Azure has around 60 plus regions worldwide and it is operating more than 140 available countries as well. There are certain things you need to know about regions. Azure has more global regions than any other cloud provider. These regions provide customers the flexibility and scale needed to bring applications closer to their users. And these regions preserve data residency and offer comprehensive compliance and resiliency option for the customers. For most Azure services, when you deploy a resource in Azure, you choose the region where you want this resource to be deployed. And then there are special regions as well. Azure has specialized regions that you might want to use when building out your applications for compliance or legal purposes. These include US DOD Central, US Government Virginia, US Government Iowa, and more. Then there is China East and China North and more. These regions are available through a unique partnership between Microsoft and 21 Wyanet but Microsoft does not directly maintain these data centers. Let's explore region pairs. It is possible that a large enough disaster could cause an outage large enough to affect even two data centers. That's why Azure creates region pairs. Each Azure region is paired with another region. Each Azure region is paired with another region within the same geography such as US, Europe or Asia, at least 300 miles away, which together makes a region pair. The exception is Brazil South, which is paired with a region outside of its geography. Some things you need to know about region pairs are physical isolation. When possible, Azure prefers at least 300 miles of separation between data center in one region pair. And some of these services, such as geo redundant storage, provide automatic replication to the paired region. And in an event of a broad outage, recovery of one region is prioritized out of every pair. Let us explore Azure geographies. Azure divides the world into geographies that are defined by geopolitical boundaries or country borders. An Azure geography is a discrete market typically containing two or more regions that preserves data residency and compliance boundaries. This division has several benefits. Geographies allow customers with specific data residency and compliance need to keep their data and applications close. And geographies ensure that data residency, sovereignty, compliance, and resilience requirements are honored within geographical boundaries. And finally, geographies are fault tolerant to withstand complete region failure through their connection to dedicated high capacity network infrastructure. Let us determine the availability options. First is how to get 99.9% .9 SLA with a premium storage. A single virtual machine with a premium storage has an SLA of 999, which is 99.9%. .9%. A single virtual machine with a premium storage has an SLA of 99.9%. .9%.
you can quickly migrate existing virtual machine to Azure through lift and shift. Lift and shift is a no code option where each application is migrated as is, providing the benefits of the cloud without the risk or cost of making code changes. Availability sets are a way for you to ensure your application remains online if a high impact maintenance event is required or hardware failure occurs. Availability set is made up of date domain or fault domain. We will talk about update and fault domain in detail on the next section. Let's find out what is availability zone. Availability zones are physically separate locations within an Azure region that use availability set to provide additional fault tolerance. Some of the features of availability zone include each availability zone is an isolation boundary containing one or more data center equipment with independent power, cooling, and networking. If one availability zone gets down, the other continues working. And the availability zones are typically connected to each other through very fast private fiber optic networks. An availability zone allows customers to run mission critical application with high availability and low latency replication. And finally, let's explore multi-region disaster recovery. Since the pair of regions is directly connected and far enough apart to be isolated from regional disasters, you can use them to provide reliable services and data redundancy. Some services offer automatic geo-redundant storage using region pairs. If there is an extensive Azure outage, one region out of every pair is prioritized to make sure at least one is restored as quick as possible for application hosted in that region. And planned Azure updates are rolled out to region pair one region at a time to minimize downtime and risk of application outage. Let's talk about update domain, UD, and fault domain, FD. In update domain, when a maintenance event occurs, such as a performance update, or a critical security patch applied to the host, the update is sequenced through update domains. Sequencing updates using update domains ensure that the entire data center isn't unavailable during the platform updates or patching. Update domains are a logical section of the data center and they are implemented with software and a logic. Fault domains provide for the physical separation of the workload across different hardware in the data center. This includes power, cooling, and network hardware and supports the physical server located within the server rack. In the event, the hardware that support a server rack becomes unavailable, only the rack of servers would be affected by the outage. You can use availability zone to run mission critical applications and build high availability into your application architecture by co-locating your compute, storage, networking, and data resources within a zone and replicating to other zones as well. Keep in mind that there could be a cost to duplicating your services and transferring data between zones. Availability zones are primarily for VMs, managed disk, load balancers, and SQL databases. Azure services that support availability zone fall into two categories, zonal services and zone redundant services. So you can pin the resource to a specific zone, for example, a virtual machine, a managed disk, or IP address. In zone redundant services, platform replicates automatically across zone, for example, zone redundant storage or SQL database. Let's explore resource groups. Resource group is a unit of management for your resources in Azure. You can think of a resource group in a container that allows you to aggregate and manage all the resources required for your application in a single manageable unit. This allows you to manage the application collectively over the life cycle rather than managing components individually. Before any resource can be provisioned, 
you need a resource group for it to be placed in. You can manage and apply the following resources at a resource group level. Things like metering and billing, policies, monitoring and alerts, quotas, access control, etc. Remember, when you delete a resource group, you delete all resources containing within it. Let us explore how to create a resource group. You can click on resource groups to find out all the resource group available within your Azure subscription. You can simply click on add and create a new resource group. Make sure you select your Azure subscription and provide a new resource group name. I'm going to call it AZ900. And you can pick the region where you want to keep your resource group as well. So I'm going to go with East US2 and click on Review and Create. And when it is been creating, you can see up in the notification window that your resource group has been created. And you can click on Go to Resource to directly go to your resource group. Right now, your resource group is created and it is empty. When creating and placing resources within a resource group, there are few considerations. Each resource must exist in one and only one resource group. A resource group can contain resources that reside in different regions. You decide how you want to allocate resources to resource group based on what makes the most sense for your organization. You can add or remove resources to resource group at any time. You can move resources from one resource group to another. And finally, resources for an application do not need to exist in the same resource group. However, it is recommended that you keep them in the same resource group for the ease of management. Now that we have learned about resource group, let's go and explore Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager is a management layer in which resource groups and all the resources within it is created, configured, managed, and deleted. It provides a consistent management layer which allows you to automate the deployment and configuration of these resources using different automation and scripting tools, such as PowerShell, Azure CLI, Azure Portal, REST API, or client SDKs. With Azure Resource Manager, you can deploy application and resources. So you can update, manage, and delete all resources within a solution in a single coordinated operation. And with Resource Manager, you can organize resources as well. You can manage your infrastructure through declarative templates rather than scripts. You can view which resources are linked by a dependency. And you can apply tags to resources to categorize them for management tasks such as billing. And finally, using Azure Resource Manager, you can control and access resources. You can control who in your organization can perform actions on the resources. You can manage permissions by defining roles, adding users or groups to the roles, and applying policies at a resource group level. So that concludes the core Azure architectural components. We learned about the different availability options within Azure. We talked about the resource group and the resource manager, and we touched upon what is Azure region and Azure geographies as well. In the next module, we are going to understand some of the core Azure services and products. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.